everyone. This is a quick Rhino tutorial to show you how to get line work and graphics out of your Rhino model in order to create a graphically rendered section. Um, so this is a 3D model of a project that I created when I was a student in school and this was for an Athenaeum and this model in particular was a copy of my working model that I made in order to slice it up, delete out extraneous information, and then use as the framework for my section perspective. So here in this case um, the uh, important thing for me was to delete out again any extra information like some of the extra site model that I had modeled I deleted and then some of the building interior that I had modeled, I, I deleted out some of that detail to make things move more quickly. And I really focused only on the view that I was hoping to capture. Um, I took the model and I and I Boolean differenced out a chunk of it. It was like this, these light wells continued and marched down to another chunk of the building here. I also sliced out this part of the model as well. You can use the trim command, Boolean, or a combination of trim and Boolean differencing to delete out information. You can also use a clipping plane, but in this case I wanted to cut out like two, I wanted to cut away from the model in two places, so I just found it to be quickest to slice and dice it to have like a view in, inside two different parts of my building. Um, again, I'll show you how to use a clipping plane in a simpler model with a simpler cut momentarily, but just as a way of working, making a copy of your Rhino model and, and deleting out what you don't need in order to create a nice drawing is also one way of working as well. So the next thing is to then, you know, w when you're thinking about what you, where you're going to cut, showing important parts of the building you designed, or in this case, this was an architectural project when I was a master's student, but if you are working on, on in interiors, I think deciding where you're going to cut through your project that shows the interior spaces, or if you're in architecture, cutting through your project to show the interior spaces, it doesn't really matter what you're studying, I think the whole point of the section is to communicate the space and the volume that you've worked on to manipulate. So in this case I decided I wanted to cut and slice and show through sort of this atrium and these catwalks and the stair. I also wanted to show into some of my artist and resident studios as well as the second floor gallery space. So I sliced in two places to kind of capture all of that. And then what I would like to show you is how to set a view. So um, under, if you right click at the top, you know, if you double click, it opens all the windows. If you double click on back on the view, it opens one view. One view. Um, I like using the Arctic view in order to get like a good image that has some graphics and shadows. Um, it'll, it'll it's useful if you're using Photoshop to kind of blend in some just general illumination and texture. I have all of my materials just set to a default texture in this case, and I'm going to manipulate uh, the graphics in Photoshop later. So I didn't assign materials. Again, it's all just the default material, and that's the Arctic view. If you right-click and go to Display Options, I'll just show you quickly what my Arctic view is set up as. Yours might look similar or it might have been manipulated or it might look a little bit different than this, but if you want just like that ghosted white view, if you set your materials by layer to default um, and then you select solid color um, as the background, I always like just solid white because I can blend that nicely in Photoshop. Under the ground plane settings I have on and shadow only set. This altitude, I just leave that alone, automatic altitude, and then linear workflow, workflow settings, use render settings, leave that there. The shading, um, this is what my setup looks like. I, I imagine yours looks similar, but in case it's changed, just take a look at that. And then under visibility is where I have changed some things. So I typically turn off, like in this case, because I want to just blend shadows, I've turned off things like edges, uh, curves, mesh wires, I just want to show sort of the the lightly like lightly let's say rendered view. And then under lighting scheme I have ambient occlusion set and the ambient color is black. So if your Arctic view didn't look quite like this when you set it, just take a look at these settings and have them match and see if that helps your Arctic view to look better. So X out of that. So once you have your view set, how you want it to 
to look. Maybe I'll zoom out just a little bit and get the kind of the end of my building, even though it's kind of ghosted, it's okay. Um, maybe this is the view that I like. What you want to do is um, save this view. So I like being able to go back and forth to the views. So if I make changes in the model or I need to pull something else later, I like having that view saved so I can find it again and not be guessing. It's like nearly impossible to get the same exact perspective twice. So if you are doing a section perspective, or even if you're doing just a straight section, I would save your view. So if you right click again at the top and go set view and then click show named views panel, if you don't already have it open, which you might, it'll open this window over here. If you do have it open and you click it, it'll close it. So I'm not going to click it because it's open, but you go over here and this, it might take a minute to load depending on how big your file is, but this has all these different named views that I've already made in this file. I'm going to make a new one for this just to show you. So I hit the plus sign. It asks you to think of a name for what you want to call it so you can remember. I'm just going to call it that and hit apply. And it'll think about it for a second. You might, you might get a little spinny wheel, yep, a rainbow spinny wheel while it's thinking. But what that'll do is it'll save the view um, that you've created in the list, and again, spinny wheel for a second. And then um, that way, again, if you decide you need to add a little bit more detail or you make some minor changes in the process of rendering, you can go back and forth. So say you navigate away from you know, the view that you had set, you can quickly go back to it by, again, just simply double clicking on it and it'll snap you back to where you were before, which is nice. Um, let's see, so then because I want to work with this, let's say I wanted to use Photoshop for this exercise, what I would do is I would just export this as a JPEG or PNG, so to do that I type view capture to file, this is just my way of doing it, you can do a screenshot, a lot of people like that, I like controlling things a little bit better, so um, here I, you can click Check any of these if you want. Transparent background will give you sort of this background. It'll um, make it so that that is transparent. So you can, if you wanted to add your own sky, just nice because it'll crop out that white. In this case, I actually modeled a ground plane uh, that my building sat on so that I could be sure to have like shadows and, thing and things reflect correctly. So that's why that ground plane doesn't show. But so under resolution, I set this to custom. And then I go in and I set 300 dpi, and then I pick my paper size. I just like knowing for sure like how big something is going to be. Um, you could get away with 200. Um, notice that it changes the paper size automatically for some reason. But if you go back after it changes the paper size, so you set the dpi first, then you change the paper size, and it'll it'll calculate the pixels for you. Um, I would say like 200 is pretty, you can get by with that if, the, if you want to keep your file size manageable. You can print that and it shows pretty well. Anything lower than that starts to get a little too pixelated, at least in my opinion. 300 dpi is like the sort of print dpi that's recommended for large format printing. Like the photo lab likes you to have 300 dpi. Uh, but in any case, um, this is what I would go, go through these steps uh, and then hit apply. And then what it does is it asks you where you want to save it, and it asks you what you want to name it. So navigate to where you want to save it, what you want to name it. This is where you can change the file type. So a JPEG will be a raster, flat image, so will a TIFF. PNG is also a flat image as well, but that's the one you select if you want a transparent background. So you select that if you want that sky to be out, and then I click that box just to, I don't know why they make you choose that so many times, but select all that and then hit save and then it'll, I'm not going to do it because it's going to think for a little while fair warning if you're if you have a really heavy file it will think for a little while so I'm going to not do that because I don't want to <laughs> make you all wait uh, for that so hit save and let it think maybe if, if again if you have a really heavy file maybe plan that you'd be doing something else in this time while it's thinking I'm just going to hit cancel and back out of that just so that uh, we can keep moving here um so that's kind of the steps for getting things set up for section perspective. The next thing to do would be to then take that line work and either manipulate it in Rhino or manipulate it in Illustrator. So I'm going to show you what I ended up doing for this is I, I did go through and I, um, I, I used Make 2D and I made a um, sort of a drawing 
by getting the vector line work out of this and then manipulating it in Illustrator. I'm going to show you how to do that in a simpler file just because this one takes a while to think. But uh, so let me switch over to a simpler file. So I'm going to go through those steps. Okay, so this is a 3D model that I made in in demonstrating just basic rhino in order to demonstrate just basic rhino skills. So what we're going to do here is um, practice with clipping planes, practice with Make 2D, and then how to um, export. Uh, you can do this with a more complicated file as well, but just for the nature of time and waiting, uh, I thought I would use something simpler. So, to start, I always like when I'm using the clipping plane, personally I like to have different views open just to help me keep track of where things are. So, in this case I have a front view and I just sort of navigated so my model was sort of centered in the front view, left view, and right view. I think just some of the side views as well as the perspective view are fine to have open. It just, again, helps to see things. Uh, and so then I'm just going to draw my clipping plane in the right plane because I want to I want to cut and kind of look this way in my model. So I'm going to double click in right so that notice that it turns blue because I'm in the right view. And I type clipping plane, I hit enter. Now it's asking me to draw the clipping plane. So I click and I'm, it's asking me to draw you know, the box that's going to be slicing through my file. And so notice that got a little weird. Uh, and then I can notice that on the in the perspective view, let me do that one more time. So if I hit undo, undo, um, and I type clipping plane, just do it a little fast. So clipping, maybe, clipping, there it is. Sorry about that. Clipping plane, hit enter, click and draw your rectangle. And so notice that it clips things out in the right, but notice over here, this little box has appeared. I'm gonna just move this around a little bit with my gumball. And so notice, if you don't have gumball on and you wanna use it, just type gumball and it'll open. So gumball, uh, and then hit on if it's not on. I just find that helpful with moving things around in an inaccurate way, but moving things like the clipping plane is really helpful. So. Notice if I click the red and I'm holding my left mouse button and dragging it around, notice on the right view over here, as I'm dragging that, it um, it's like changing and I'm slicing through different things as I'm passing it through. Notice that it's not actually doing anything in any of the other views. So that's okay if it's not. Let's set that to do that. So um, if you select the clipping plane, notice this changes up at the top. Uh, if you drag this little window down, maybe yours is already dragged down, but Notice then that all of my views that I have open show up on this list and there's the right view is checked and the others are not. So if you simply check those, now as I drag my clipping plane with the gumball, notice that it is manipulating dip, you know, all of the different views slightly. So I'm seeing that clipping plane. If I pan around, I can more easily see what I'm cutting through in perspective. So. Again, clipping plane, pretty useful. Um, so then, let's say, let's say I wanted to do a section. So I just click on the right view, and let's say I right view. Don't click on right view to make it big. So you can see, like this is a little thicker. This line where it's a little thinner. So say I get my view set up. Um, the next thing that you can do is you can either select this um, by hit if you hit Command A. And then you could go File, Export Selected, or let's actually, let's make 2D first. So hit Command A, and then type Make 2D, hit Enter. Um, and this is where uh, I would set Clipping Plane Intersections is not always checked automatically. So since we want the section intersection to show up, make sure that one's checked. Hidden lines is another one that's useful. That'll show things that are behind other things in the section. You may or may not want that. If you have a really complicated model, I'd recommend just turning that off. Um, I always like having the output grouped because it just makes fewer um, layers. Uh, and then I also like viewport rectangle. That one will just show you like this um, boundary. And then the other things I just typically lean off, leave off. So I hit apply. And then it's making, did it really fast because that wasn't that complicated, but on the left it was showing me that I was thinking about it. So now if I go back over to the right, the um, make 2D should show up, maybe here. Um, let's see, if you go set view and do top. 
Oh, okay. So if your clipping plane is <laughs> turned on, it will clip out the view of the Make 2D. Sorry about that. So either delete the clipping plane or you can, yeah, delete the clipping plane or you can disable the clipping plane in any case. Um, and that will turn your uh, Make 2D visible. Um, so then here is where, let's just, um, let's just use this section view here. That one's pretty nice. Um, I'm just going to delete out the rest of this Make 2D that I was doing with the clipping plane hiding it. So again, delete that clipping plane if, you're, if your Make 2D isn't showing up. I don't know why I did that today, but it did. Um, so here you have the line work. Now, one of the things when you get your line work to check on, so if I select the 2D line work, um, just make sure that your display color, your line type, and your print color are, are all set to by layer. For some, for some reason, some people's um, exports from Make 2D get set to by object or by parent or they're set to something else. And so just making sure that it's by layer uh, will allow you to then quickly control like line weights. If you wanted to control them directly out of Illustrator, you could edit the line weights. If you remember from previous skills course, you can set the print width for your line, line works here, and you can set the color as well. So here, if I set this to 0.9, um, let's see, display, uh, I think it's print display, yeah, print display, uh, if you turn your print display on, it'll show you how thick your line work is, and that's where maybe adjusting adjusting the line work depending on that thickness, again, uh, could be helpful. So over here, maybe I turn that down a little because it's kind of fat. Um, notice my clipping plane intersection, it named that layer, so that's like the section cut. And then the curves layer um, is where... Uh, that's just any of the line work beyond. So I think that should be like that, that line work there. Um, let's see. Now this is where also like drawing some additional information. If let's say like your Make 2D didn't give you all of the line work that you needed or you wanted to add a little bit more information to your section that you didn't model digitally in uh, Rhino in three dimensions, this is where you can add things like uh, correct like the thickness of what you're cutting through if it was too thin in your model potentially hopefully it wasn't but this is where you can again add any additional information that maybe you didn't 3d model um, in, in a two-dimensional drafting way so you can do that just by drafting on the layer itself so if you wanted to draft on something else on the cut plane you could draft on that layer if you, again if you have that information set to to print by layer, then you can control that um, globally, which is nice. And then the last thing I would say is like exporting. So there's a couple different ways you can set up a layout view and set the scale um, or set like the page size with that. You can also just um, select it all and then go file export selected and then select your um, file type. In this case, Adobe Illustrator and export line work that way. If you hit, uh, let's see, hit options, let's see. Um, this is where it could give you some nice control. I, I think snapshot of current view is for section perspectives in any case, that's helpful. Um, and then export viewport boundary, again, that'll export kind of the bounding box of your view and then hit you know, export, uh, give it a name, a, a unique name. Um, better than I am, and you hit export, and it it asks you those options if you haven't preset them. So um, snapshot of current view, preserve scale. So if you're if you're doing a section um, through a page setup, preserving scale makes more sense. But if you're doing a section perspective, it's okay to do a snapshot because these are inherently um, depending on how you're doing it could be important to be to scale or it could be less important to be to scale. Um, so then you know you navigate to where you save that and then open that Illustrator file. It may take a little trial and error. Um, again if you want to make a layout and then you can print that layout that's another way of doing that um, in any case. So 
Um, that is all I have for you in terms of Rhino to Illustrator or Rhino to um, Photoshop.